Ah, feminism. How can you not love it? How can you not love the pure narcissism? Lack of self-awareness, no humility. How can you not love those characteristics being projected in the strong, flawless female characters that you should be treating as queens? How can you not admire the power and stunningly braveness of these incredible, the, 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 in every way specimens? You had no problem with, let's say, Sarah Connor. What did she have that they don't have? Well, hypothetical feminazi, allow me to enlighten you with the many things that these poor oppressed writers fail to master. Context, character development, and more importantly, good writing. These are the things that made Sarah Connor the kick-ass legend we know her as today. An actual strong, brave, and stunning woman in movies. So let's go through what made her so fucking awesome. Sarah Connor is the kick-ass gun-toting mother of the future leader of the human resistance named John Connor, starting off as an ordinary working waitress, but later becomes the target of a killer cyborg called the Terminator, sent from the future. Thankfully, a soldier named Carl Reese is sent from the future to protect her, and it is through him she learns who she is and why this is happening. She is sceptical at first, but as their journey continues, she becomes more convinced. They end up falling in love, later conceiving John Connor. Unfortunately, during their final confrontation with the Terminator, Reese is killed, Sarah is injured, but through sheer will, destroys the Terminator in a fucking press like a fucking boss. And it's in this moment is where her life truly does begin. What made her compelling is she never started off as a kick-ass legend before she started off vulnerable, lacking any combat experience, but it was a strong man who loved her, who was willing to protect her, to die for her, to show her that she had a strength to her that she never knew she had. And it was losing that man that motivated her to become stronger, more assertive, more dangerous in order to prepare her unborn child of what was about to come. When we next see her in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, we see how she has changed over the years. We see her getting trapped in the loony bin after getting caught trying to blow up a computer factory, which resulted in her son hating her, becoming disillusioned by her upbringing after being put in foster care. Now Sarah is alone and being mistreated by the people who are supposed to help her, but despite her dilemma, she is still determined to escape and reunite with her son. She became the complete opposite of the vulnerable waitress we were introduced to. She's learned to become more resourceful, experienced in combat, weapons and explosives, and has made friends with people who can provide these means. But she was still a flawed woman, grieving the loss of the man she loved, and the knowledge of the upcoming apocalypse had caused her to lose her humanity, viewing people as walking corpses. She even comes across as if she treats her own son like some kind of objective. And as the movie goes on, it's looking like she's becoming less human, while the Terminator sent to protect John is learning to be more human. And when the Terminator tells her about Miles Dyson, the man responsible for creating this whole mess, she was even willing to murder him. But only after wounding Miles and seeing him up close, begging for his son's safety over his own life, does it bring up a hint of empathy she had suppressed all these years. It causes her to break down in one of the more powerful moments in the movie, but it's a great moment that redeems her after all the trauma she had endured, the harsh treatment she suffered in the mental home. She still has her humanity, and it's through her failed assassination attempt does she redeem herself. She learns to open up to her son, showing she has always loved him, and learns to become a mother again. She even puts her differences aside with Miles after he decides to destroy his life's work to protect the lives of billions of innocent people. Sarah Connor started as a scared woman who became hardened by her experiences, but it was through working with the very things that made her who she was, that she was able to grow as a person. See, it's called character development. She wasn't charming, 
graceful or full-on gorgeous despite being attractive but she was resourceful, smart and brave, even willing to die to protect her son from harm. And it was here in Terminator 2 her arc had been fulfilled. Yes, Sarah Connor Chronicles was also a decent continuation and I love Lena Headey in the role. And I love how she views killing as a last resort whenever she goes out looking for other men like Dyson. It shows that the character has evolved over the years since the events of the last movie. But to me, Terminator 2 was where her journey had wrapped up perfectly and that was all thanks to the writing of James Cameron, William Wisher Jr and the charismatic performance of Linda Hamilton. And fuck you, Genesis and Dark Fate. I'll get to you both one day. But anyway, even for a semi-illiterate working class scumbag with barely any educational qualifications, I hope I still brought some credibility and insight to the proceedings. And whether you beautiful bastards are Northern, English or not, thanks for watching. And do remember to like and subscribe. But right now, that's me done and I'm off to the pub.